Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Alright, comic book story again. Oh man. Production, the announcement, the doom it, whatever. Uh, let's see. Does it matter which one we're starting off? Where did the culprit leave the room? We're talking about this. What are my options? This is exactly the same method they use for Danganronpa V3. I just have to do the same thing over and over again. And unlock the bed. Next. You gouge the eyes. What? Okay, we got that. We got the key. We got incinerator. Next. What did the culprit use to climb the wall? Back of the corpse neck, we got rope ladder, we got a key, we got fishing line. We got fishing line. Where did the culprit pass the line through last? What did the culprit use to escape? Next. What did it use to destroy the evidence? Next. Who is the nail man? Who is the nail man's copycat? first. The mailman is an urban legend of Kanai War. You write down the name of someone you want dead, and drive a nail through it and a doll to a tree behind the church. And the mailman will kill that person for you with a countless number of nails. A string of 
murder is exactly like that urban legend began half a year ago. All of the crime scenes featured a corpse and dolls nailed down within a locked room. The first murder happened six months ago at a secret club in Kamasaki District. The victim was none other than the geezer who owned the place, and the cause of death was strangulation! I heard the buy-in to place a bet was pretty steep, and cheating was rampant, so it was obviously a scummy place. The key to the door was inside of a glass. The vent that connects outside looked too high for escape to be possible. The culprit used the nails driven into the wall as footholds to climb. With the proof? Why, the nails that were bent downward! The vent was not screwed down at the time of the murder. So it could easily be removed and used as an escape room. The second murder happened three months ago. It was at a mansion near Gima District. The victim was some real estate agent who lived there. And the cause of death was again strangulation. He made a lot of money through shady real estate deals. So of course someone would be out to get him. The door to the crime scene was the only possible entrance. But the key to that door was underneath the nailed down victim. After the culprit escaped, some sort of trick was used to get the key back into the room. A fishing line passed from the vent through the eye socket of the doll and propped up the upper body of the corpse. All that was left was to exit the room, lock it, throw the key in from the vent, and boom! You got yourself a locked room mystery! The key was tossed under the victim from the vent. Once the fishing line was retrieved, the corpse's upper body fell over, completing the crime scene. The nails on the upper body didn't pierce through completely, so it wasn't nailed down at all. The third murder happened one month ago in an art gallery storage room in Gima District. The skank's cause of death was blood force trauma! She was a pretty lady who let her looks get to her head, and she got boom killed. The key to the storage room was nailed to a painting through a doll. Another trick was used to get the key back inside the room here. The painting with the doll nailed to it was propped up against the window, and then the culprit left the room. They nailed the key to the painting through the window knocked it over, and bam! All done! Those are the truths behind the past three cases. And now, there's been another murder at the clock tower in Kanai War. The woman's cause of death was strangulation! Since you told that kid you'd take care of it, we've got to solve this case. The clock tower crime scene is rather high up on the third floor. The door was locked from the inside, and the window shutters were also locked. But there was rainwater under the window, and the nails in two of the dolls had rub marks. In other words, the culprit must have hung a rope ladder from the dolls to escape out the window. With my logic, anything is possible. Why are you imitating Halara? Anyway... The killer cut their footing on the way down from the window. That way, they could just pull on one side of the rope to retrieve the whole thing. The shutters come down under their own weight, so they locked once the rope was collected. I'm surprised you noticed the auto-locking feature. You sure love your shutters, Master! The rope ladder was collected, then burned in a church incinerator, which only clergy have access to. That's how you know the mailman must be someone from the clergy. But one question arose from this. The mailman killing share one more characteristic. All the victims were murdered by strangulation. This piece of information wasn't publicized. Later. It 
which means that it was someone mimicking the meal. But I already know the identity of the copycat killer. First, the mailman must be someone thin enough to pass through the vent. Someone with the skills to throw the key with precision. And someone affiliated with the church. The priest! You're the mailman! were strangled to death. Because he was the first witness in each case, the person capable of replicating the mailman's crimes is... The Worshipper! You're the copycat criminal! case. What's that? It's the truth. The soul of the true culprit who built this mystery labyrinth. I see. It looks otherworldly, but there's an ominous air around it. Thank you, Halara. I was only able to make it this far thanks to you. I only kept my part of the deal. You made the right choice hiring me. But I will say one thing. You've taken another step toward being a detective. That much is certain. I, Halara Nightmare, acknowledge you. R really Halara? You... Do? Uh. All right, all eyes on Shinigami. What's about to happen? Oh, isn't it obvious? It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to move to the back. Bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami. Shall we sponge this cursed face? Dead. D dead. What? What? What is 
this? I sure worked hard today. Feels so good to boom kill the murderer. The mystery labyrinth crumbles when you reap the soul of the true culprit. Then, the cause of the mystery labyrinth's creation pays the price by vanishing with it. I knew this would happen, but it still hurts to see someone die before my eyes. It's like I killed them myself. No, I did kill them. I killed them with the ruthless blade of the truth. There, there. Humans boom kill cows and pigs all the time and eat them. You don't feel bad about that, right? These were the souls of deranged murderers. At least you didn't eat them. If you look at it that way, there's nothing to feel bad about at all. It's not so simple when it comes to people dying. Did, did you people do this? Did you kill them with some kind of poison? Hey, hold on. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, too much is happening all at once. We shall talk at headquarters. Follow me there. Immediately. Is it just me, or are things more complicated now than before entering the Mystery Labyrinth? Oh, you want help? Are you going to rely on me again? Oh, fine. I can't say no when you ask for help. Cat criminal. Search the church for the tools used in each crime. I'm sure you'll find plenty of evidence. If you think I'm lying, go ahead and check it out. Thanks! I didn't know you could do that. But that was a super lazy confession. Will it work? That should do it. We even have witnesses, so this case is closed. The priest mumbled something, but I couldn't quite hear him. Anyway, everyone here will be taken to Amaterasu Corporation at once. What? It wasn't effective at all. He's so stubborn. This is why I hate authority! What do we do? Wait, I hear something. Huh? What now? A motorbike. Something is heading this way at an alarming speed. It can't be. <sighs> Where is that coming from? No, no. What are you doing here? Who are you? You dare speak so carelessly? Who do you think I am? The hero who defends peace and order upon my ward. Director of the Amaterasu Peacekeepers. The Honorable Yomi Hellsmile. The Peacekeepers Director? So he is the head of the Peacekeepers. Now you know, small fry. Bow down. What are 
you doing here? No need to be alarmed. Benevolent Director Yomi is here to help. Oh, excuse me for the late introduction. I am Vice Director of the Peacekeepers, Martina Electro. She's my beloved right hand. No one else gets to have her. What's with him? Master, be careful. This Yomi guy is dangerous. Huh? I've never seen anyone emit such a dangerous aura before. He's that bad? So... What brings you here? Oh, right. I was so focused on my beloved right hand that I completely forgot. As mentioned earlier, Director Yomi is here to help. I hear you've been troubled by Seth's unreasonable treatment. Is that right? Huh? D Director Yomi, what is going on here? Why am I... We have discovered you've been receiving sizable kickbacks for facilitating donations meant for the church. Uh. We now know why you were so desperate to clean up all the nail man pills. After all, it would be troublesome to lose access to all that money. If the priest was arrested as the nail man. W wait, please. Director Yomi, I did this under your orders. Did you say something? Because I didn't hear a thing. I, I only did this because you, you ordered me to. Seth, you make me sad. I am the hero and defender of peace in this city. My peacekeepers are proud soldiers of that mission. And yet, you let yourself be corrupted. How could you? Seth, for the sake of the peacekeepers and the peace of Kanai Ward, die. Taking advantage of your position as a peacekeeper executive is a serious crime. The punishment must be severe. But... I... Yeah, I'm annoyed my own underling would betray me like this. I'm so annoyed. I'd go insane if I didn't toy around with my beloved right hand. It's an honor. <sighs> He's terrible. Like a lizard cutting off its own tail to survive. Someone like him is in charge of the peacekeepers? Don't look him in the eyes. Don't talk to him either. If possible, don't even breathe the same air as him. Though it's probably too late for that. Well then, to our Shit for Brains friends playing detective, looks like I have to give you a warning. Know your place in my city and stay there. Follow the rules and don't disturb our peace. Or I'll need you to die! <laughs> Director Yomi is both the law and the peacekeepers itself. Defying us means you defy law and order. You will receive fitting treatment for such behavior. Before, you were insignificant specks of dust. But now that you've banded together, you've become an eyesore. Detectives, my ass. Shit. Wow. That's not very nice. Let's go. 
My beloved right hand. Yes, Director Yomi. <sighs> Looks like we've been targeted by someone dangerous. Yeah, thanks to you! One wrong move and it would have been all over, you got that? I'm sorry, but... No buts! None! How did this happen anyway? Alara, help me out. Please explain what happened. You said you acknowledged me as a detective, didn't you? What? When did I say that? Huh? That's such a shame, Master. Everything that happens in the Mystery Labyrinth gets forgotten. What? Alara's memory must have been wiped after entering and leaving the Labyrinth. Nothing inside the Mystery Labyrinth can be taken into the real world. Not even memories. Unless you have a contract with yours truly, that is. But... I thought Halara and I had finally reached an understanding. Memories from up until you enter the Mystery Labyrinth are retained, like the debt you owe for your assignment. That's awful! Hey, Yuma? Are you listening? You better make sure this doesn't happen again. By the way, Chief, our submarine office is tipping over. Are you sure the peacekeepers didn't mess with it? What? Seriously? I have to go back and repair it! Yuma, help me out! Follow me! It was supposed to be time for you to reveal the solution, but we've ended up in quite the mess. Huh? Y yeah This is my first time dealing with the true culprit dying before they could be accused. But, I recall how you did your best to try and solve the case. Huh? You should be proud. Alara! Look, the Chief is calling for you. You should go. Right! Thank you! serious? A peacekeeper executive was taking bribes from the church? If Director Yomi said so, it would be considered the truth, even if it isn't. What about the priest being the nail man? It's going to be publicly announced as the truth. It appears the priest's strong desire to save others turned him into the nail man. He saw people wishing for revenge as they hammered those nails in the forest, and decided he needed to save them. That was the motive, though it could all be a story made up by the peacekeepers. So, what about the kitty cat criminal? You mean the copycat? That one was already publicized as well. They say the copycat did it out of admiration for the real nail man. And in the end, he felt so much guilt that he poisoned himself? None of this really makes any sense. It sure didn't look like death by poison to me. It's me! I did it along with that detective, Neely and Penitence over there! It would make more sense to assume Yomi killed them somehow. Especially when you consider the timing. He'd do it without batting an eye. Yomi Hellsmile, the director of the Peacekeepers, the leader of our enemy. 
I heard he rode in on a dragon. No, it was a motorcycle. From what I've investigated, the Peacekeeper's influence is gaining ground at Amaterasu Corporation. And there's some sort of power struggle going on. Seems like they're getting their way internally. I hear that their boss, Yomi, is extraordinarily dangerous. Extraordinary. So he is very normal? How scary. It's only a matter of time until the peacekeepers gain complete control of the corporation. When that happens, they might outright attack the World Detective Organization. Perhaps the WDO made its move because they saw the warning signs. If that's the case, it could have something to do with Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Oh yeah, what's the deal with Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? We still know nothing about it, huh? It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the Nailman incident. I wonder what it could be. Sheesh, so much to deal with. This sounds exhausting. Didn't I tell you that from the start? We have to obey directives from number one, no matter how difficult they are. <sighs> well, well, we got some very talented master detectives gathered here. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. <sighs> so much. No, everything changes from now on. Yuma, you can take a seat now. My legs feel numb. Don't stick your neck out recklessly from now on, for everyone's sake. Got it? Got it. Hey, we worked super hard. I'm so stressed, I could die. Oh wait, but I can't die. <laughs> <sighs> Do we have a visitor? That's rare. Yuma, can you go get it? Sure. Oh, it's you. My dad is back safe at home. It's all thanks to you. Thank you for helping us. No, I just... Well... I'm happy for you. Oh, look at you getting thanked. You were on your knees just a moment ago. Be quiet. Oh. Um, there's one more thing I want to ask you. What is it? Did someone else die or something? Will you play catch with me? Huh? Catch? But it's rainy. Actually, sure. Let's play. The unending rain. My memories still seem like faraway raindrops. My hands still have yet to grasp a single thing. I'm still lost. Is it all right for me to be here? But with the worn baseball gripped in my hand, my heart somehow feels lighter. Why I wanted to be a detective? It could have been for the sake of something so small that it fits in my hand. Maybe I should give myself credit for this small realization. So, for just a bit longer... I think I'll keep pretending to be a detective.
We take those. Let's go. Like and subscribe. Shark is like TV. I'm saying.